the great masters of music, Franz Peter Schubert ranks very high. Some have outdone him in religious humility, others in technical skill, and technical skill, and still others in dramatic force. But above them all, Schubert stands alone in the wonderful directness of his musical language, which speaks alike to the hearers of every social class and nationality. As a songwriter, Schubert was supreme. The technique of singing had been understood for almost two centuries, but Schubert was the first to define fully its emotional possibilities and to avoid the lyrical style that had heretofore always been used. It is said that from the beginning to the end of his career, he never penned a phrase simply because it was vocally effective. In his method of working, he relied implicitly upon his musical inspiration, or as the singer Vogel once remarked, he composed always in a state of clairvoyance. I can give you but the barest outline here of the short and tragic life of the great master, but his career was so crowded with interesting events that you will find it well worth reading in detail. Schubert was born near Vienna on January the 31st, 1797. He came of peasant stock, his father an assistant school teacher, and his mother a cook in domestic service. Of this union, 14 children were born, so that Franz, as you can well imagine, grew up amid surroundings of extreme poverty. Far beyond all his brothers and sisters was Franz musically gifted, and it was by his father and choir master Holzer, a friend of the family, that the boy was first taught. He made rapid progress, of course, and at a very early age began the prolific composing to which he devoted his life. His works, as we look at them now, are nearly all masterpieces, yet at the time but little was thought of them. The composer's life was one of continued disappointment. He died at the age of 31. Even during the few short years of his maturity, he was hampered by poverty, discouraged by continued ill health, and his efforts to succeed in a cold, unappreciating world. Yet with all, he has placed his name among the immortals. It is pathetic to realize that when this wonderful genius died, so unrecognized had he been by his contemporaries that his total worldly effects were appraised at approximately $12, less than one-tenth the amount it cost at that time to procure a decent burial. Thus was genius rewarded. The Ave Maria given on this record is one of the finest of its kind ever written. Its melodic theme is so beautiful for Schubert was preeminently a composer of exquisite melody that it lends itself admirably to this violin arrangement. Karl Fleisch was born on October 9, 1873, at Mosen in Hungary. At six years, he received instruction in violin playing from the village schoolmaster. At 12 years, he entered the Vienna Conservatorium and left three years later crowned with first prize. In 1890, he entered the Conservatoire of Paris and became a pupil of Salzai and later of the famous Marcy. In 1894, he left the Paris Conservatoire carrying first prize and unanimously conceded honor. Since then, he has made a wonderful success all over Europe and during the season of 1914 in the United States. His supremacy among the foremost of living violin players in point of technical, interpretative, and intellectual qualifications is acknowledged.